Hallelujah. Every praise, yes. every praise, every praise. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord who is responsible for every good thing in our lives. He blesses us daily, whether we realize it or not. And so let us lift our voice and let us praise God from whom all good things come from. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know if you can realize it or not, but I'm in the sanctuary. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. I'm in the sanctuary. Yes. Praise the, the Lord. Spirit, the Holy Spirit told me this morning, go to church. Thank you. Zoom is okay. Yeah. But after the way God blessed Bethel Hobbs Farm yesterday, I, I had to be in church. <laughs> Amen. So I am in church this morning Amen. for the first time in over 18 months. God is good. Yes. God is still good. God is always good. Yes. And all the time, God is good. And if we have the mind of Jesus, he promises that he will make our way straight, that he will take care of any obstacles. So at this time, we're going to have a selection by Brother Corbett. Brother Jim Ramos is going to bring us the invocation. Brother Ron Manning is going to give the invocation response. Our uh, scripture lessons this, this morning comes from 1 Samuel. 23, 1 through 5. That will be brought to us by Brother Ulysses Tapley. And we'll have a song selection by Sister Cynthia Shepherd. So let us prepare to enter the presence of Almighty God with hope, with understanding, Amen. with love. Amen. Brother Corbin. Thank you, Brother Lindy. And I'm going to uh, sing a song that just really means a lot to me. And God is so amazing. He's the only God that has a personal involvement in our lives. And our God is so magnificent that he says, I am God, I'm the creator, but I am your personal friend. Oh, yes. So I hope that as I minister to myself, I'm going to minister to somebody else who needs to recognize he's not only just the God of the universe and the creator, but he's your best friend. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes, yes. He's Amen. your best friend. That's why Jesus in John 15, 5 said to the disciples as he was going, he said, I no longer call you servants. I call you my friends because I have revealed to you mm. everything. Yes. Not just something, but everything oh God. that the Father has revealed to me. And he's still doing that today, not yes, just to yes. the disciples. 
So as I minister to myself, I'm hoping I'm going to minister to you that think of God not only as the creator of the universe, but the God of the universe, but also your best friend. Amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus, thank you for this new revelation that you're not only King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but you are my best friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who am I that you are mindful of me that you hear me when I call and is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me it's amazing oh Lord who am I that you are mindful of me that you hear me lord when i call and is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me it's amazing i am a friend of I am a friend of God, He calls me friend. Whoa, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God, yes I am. I am a friend of God, He calls me friend. He calls me friend. Lord, I have to ask a third time. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me, God, when I call? And is it true that you are thinking of me, and how you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God, oh yes, I am a friend of God, and He calls me friend, oh, I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God, I declare it, I am a friend of God, and He calls me friend, He calls me and he calls me friend he calls me friend and I want this to soak into your souls the God Almighty the Lord of glory he has called you friend the creator of the universe Who's the God Almighty? He's the Lord of glory. He has called you friend. The sovereign God. Who's the God Almighty? He's the Lord of glory. And he has called you friend. The everlasting God. Who's the God Almighty, who's the Lord of glory, He has called you friend. And in the midst of all of my disobedience, the God Almighty, the Lord of glory, He still calls me friend. Oh yes. God Almighty, the Lord of glory, He has called me friend. So I declare.
declare out to the universe, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Oh, yes. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Reverend Williams, as you shepherd us, you are a friend of God. Amen. You are a friend of God. Oh, yes. You are a friend of God. He calls you friend. Leslie, my wife of 35 years and wow. to Ashley, God calls you friend. God calls you friend, Leslie. God calls you friend, Leslie. Oh, and restored choir, we are friends of God. As we sing, we are friends of God. Yes, we are. We are friends of God. He calls us friends. And my call to action brotherhood. We are friends of God. We are friends of God. Yes, we are. We are friends of God. He calls us friends. And my Bethel Satorka family. We are friends of God. We are friends of God. Oh, yes. We are friends of God. He calls us friends. He calls us friends. He calls us friends. He calls us friends. He Hallelujah, hallelujah, Amen. to God be the glory, hallelujah, yes. once again, the Holy Spirit thank is you. moving and speaking on one accord, so I thank you for that selection, amen, as it ties into the word, but what I want everybody to do right now, too often we sing songs, they kind of go in one ear and we're just yes. moving to the beat, but the songs always, always have a message, yes. I, I want you to point to yourself, I am a friend of God, I am now, a when friend you of God, think yes. about your own friend we have in Jesus. Mm. When you think about your own best friend, yes. your friend is somebody that even when you're tired, you'll wake up in the middle of the night because they need help. Yes. Your friend is somebody that even if you're low on funds because they're your friend and they're in trouble, you'll share what you have. Your friend is somebody that you love in season yes. and out of season. Your friend is somebody that you'll always yes. pick up the phone for. That's what you do as a human yes. being that's fallible. How much more will God do? Mm. And this God, you said it right, Brother Corbett, this God who is the creator of all things, yes. the sovereign God, yes. the all-knowing God, yes. the all-powerful God, yes. the God of glory. Yes. He says, I call you my yes. friend. Yes. Cynthia, I call you my friend, God mm. says. It. Mm. Carol, I call you my yes. friend, God yes. says. Larry, I call yes. you my Thank friend. You, God. God. How awesome is that that you have God as your friend? Yes. My God, the ruler of mm. the entire universe with all power in his hands, yes. the head person in charge of everything. Yes. You have him as yes. friend. Yes. And it's not a lopsided relationship. Relationship. Oh God, you just, God is hilarious. He just reminded me of a story when I was little, not when I was little, when my children were little and we're sitting in McDonald's and this girl walks by and my oldest daughter, who was very young, then is like, hey, 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 hi. She's like, that's my friend. But the girl walked by like she didn't know her. Mm. Okay. So it's not just that we call God friend. It's not that we saw God and said, God, I would like you to be my friend. Mm. God acknowledges the yes. friendship in return. Yes. It's reciprocal. Yes. God says, I will yes. be your friend when no one yes. else will. Yes. I will be your friend. You can mm. call me in the midnight hour. Yes. You can ask me whatever you need. Of. Yes. I'll always be there for you. I'll never hang up the line on mm. you because I see you as valuable and I call you my yes. friend. Oh my God. Mm. We need to get that deep down on the inside yes. sometimes because sometimes, you know, when we mess up, I love it because Brother Corbett said even when we've gone our own way, been mm. disobedient, been wayward, yes. God still says baby you are my friend yes. and i'm not gonna forsake the friendship i'm not gonna yes. you know them sometimey friends you have they're your friend when you got something well, they're your friend when you could do something <laughs> for them but yeah. when you need something they don't they don't really know you no more mm. 
God says, I'm your friend, beloved. Hallelujah. I am your best friend. Yes. And I'll ever renege on that friendship. Mm. And we need to take <laughs> ownership of that. Yes. Stop running from God. Stop hiding from God. But acknowledge yes. that God finds us that valuable mm. despite our flaws. That he Hallelujah. wants to be our Hallelujah. friend. Hallelujah. He longs. For that intimate mm, friendship. Hallelujah. Get it on the inside, beloved. Yes. The, the preacher last week said, don't sit down, stand up. Mm. The way to stand up is to know, you know, despite my deficiencies, mm. the ruler and creator of this whole world yes. calls me, little old me, yes. his friend. Mm. Yes. That's big. Big. That's awesome. Mm. That is amazing. Amazing. I love it. Whenever you're feeling down, know that God calls you. I don't care if the world is turning on you. Mm -hmm. You got the one friend mm. that is valuable to have. Yes. You got the only friend you'll ever need, God. Yes. And you're not just pining after him, but he's acknowledging you. Yes. And calling you friend. Hallelujah. Let us go to the very throne room of the very seat of power of this entire universe, our friend, our Abba Daddy in heaven. And I thank you, Brother Ramos, as you will lead us to the throne of grace to have a little talk yes. with our friend. Yes, yes. Thank you, church. Good morning, church family. God calls me his friend. Wow. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, of all minds are clear. Oh, Father God, Father God, I thank you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, the bottom of my spirit, the bottom of my soul. I thank you for the way you love me and us, the whole church family here, the way you love us, Lord, the love that is so infinite that we can't even comprehend it. Oh, Lord, we love you, but our love cannot even equal to the love that you have for us. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Lord, thank you for blessing us each and every day, despite that all this negativity that the world gives us, despite this pandemic that comes around us, we are still here, arm in arm, still worshiping you, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for for Pastor and her eloquent and beautiful words that she brings, that you give to her, Lord, and she gives to us. She is our shepherd, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for our first gentleman, Brother Deshaun. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our previous pastor and previous first lady, Lord, Pastor Gregory Lennon and Sister Mom. Lord, I, I feel so blessed, Lord, that the path that you put us on is the way we're going. It, it, it's, it's, it's such a gift. It's such a gift that I was able to meet these great people, Lord, that, that you put in my life. And, and, I, and I thank you for that. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for each and every one here, Lord, because of their heart, their true heart. It's so beautiful. And Lord, on top of all that, you call us friend. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father God, I pray that you bless us in this service and keep us, Lord. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. I pray that we feel your presence during this service because you are with us wherever we go. Amen. I pray that this service focuses upon you and your plans for us as a body of believers. Let our actions in this service be valuable to our aim, which is to build up and edify one another. Lord, I say this from the bottom of my spirit and soul. In Jesus' holy name, Jesus I pray. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, Bethel. Good morning, Ron. Oh, Father God. Just want to say a few words before I sing this word of thanks. 
because we must be thankful to our God. He is our friend, but if we don't thank him, if we don't let him know that our hearts are filled with the joy of knowing who he is, that our friendship can get, can get even closer. I just want to let you know that three years ago, the choir asked me after we were no longer having uh, the, the uh, music, meaning me playing the drums and Jeffrey playing the, the piano, they asked me to sing with them. I thought, I thought for real it was a joke because I play, I'm a percussionist. I don't, play, I don't sing, but they asked me to sing and I said yes. And I'm so thankful that I said yes. I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to all of you. You have made me feel that whether I sing wonderfully or not, that you know not only is God our friend, but you are my friend. And I thank you all. So let us thank God. Hmm. I'm going to start over, sorry. See what I mean? Though y'all wasn't no singing now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
so good, Lord. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's been so good. Oh, y'all could keep on giving God a little praise. Turn your mics on, everybody. Let's give God a praise break. We say thank you, God. You've been so good. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you, God. Excellent is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've always been there. A friend till the end. And we say thank you. In spite of everything we've done, in spite of who we are, in spite of our mistakes, say thank you, God, because you loved us so deep, so well. Yes. Hallelujah. Been so, so good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to get in the habit. The Bible says, mm. if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Well, what yeah. do you look like before a God who is holy and calls you friend mm. that a rock has got to cry out for you? Yeah. Yeah. We need to open up our mouths. Our, we might be in our living rooms, our bedrooms, our kitchens, our studies, wherever. But anywhere we are, it's right to give God praise and to say thank you, Lord God. Because even through the rough times, you've still just been so good. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Manning, for that beautiful, beautiful song. And thank you for saying yes to God when he wanted to stretch you and use you in a new way. Yes. God be the glory. Good morning, Bethel. At this time, we have the scripture reading from 1 Samuel 23, 1 to 5. Then they told David saying, behold, the Philistines fight against Kayla and they robbed the threshing floors. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, go and smite the Philistines and save Kela." And David's men said unto him, behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Kela against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, arise, go down to Kela, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So David and his men went to Kela and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kayla. We thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Good morning, Bethel. Jesus is our friend. We've been reminded of this many times this morning. And as our friend, we can address him in words, using words, but we can also address him in song. And this is a prayer 
in song. you pray with me heavenly father i thank you i thank you that you are a fluid fluid god you're not a stagnant god you're a moving god i thank you god that no matter where we find ourselves fluctuating in life if we take a pause and take a moment to seek you god you always hear us and you always respond you're an ever-present help and god i just say thank you and now, Lord, use me to speak this word that you have given with your power and with your anointing. Let it come forth with clarity, Lord God, that it might pierce the hearts, the ears of your children, that we might study it, that we might feast on it, that we might hide it in our hearts, that we might begin to live from it. Oh, hallelujah so that we could live better for your glory, hallelujah, and enjoy more mountaintop experiences and less fear and less worry. This is my prayer, believing and thus receiving, knowing you've heard me and knowing when it's according to your word and your will, you'll answer. (laughs) Speak, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening, ready to be used. And your children have gathered to hear your word. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. The word has already been lifted in your hearing, and I'm only going to lift up portion of verse four or in the first four in its entirety. It's coming from the book of first Samuel 23. I hope my brothers and my sisters that when the word is read, that you're writing the scripture down so that in your own devotional time, you can go back to it. You can glean more from it. You can ask God to speak and broaden it and sear it so it stays with you. Amen. 
It is said that we only retain about 30% of what we've heard. And out of that, if we don't write it down, we remember like 10%. So how much are we losing? <laughs> how much word do we just bleed out as we say amen in the benediction? If we don't take the time to revisit it, to study it, and to ask God to seal it and sear it, that we might live from it. Verse four reads like this. Then David inquired of the Lord again. <laughs> the Lord answered him. Yes, go down to Keilah. Tequila, Kayla, or Keila. I've heard all three pronunciations. For I will give the Philistines into your hand. And for a brief moment today, I'm speaking on the topic as God has given me. Communication is key. Communication is key. If you know anything, when you hear me talk, I say, what is prayer? Prayer is communication with God. And as we heard the song sung this morning, we heard it sung that I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. And although we have best friends that we might not speak to from some time, and when we do speak to them, we pick back up the pieces as if no time has passed. What kind of friend are we when we never ever pick up the phone to have a conversation with our friend? <laughs> We never ever inquire how they're doing. We never ever tell them about our day. We never ever share with them our journey in life. What kind of friend does that make us? And if you know from your experience with friends, it's not a very good one. And if Jesus is our friend, then we ought to know that communication with our friend is key to building a vibrant, a strong relationship with that said friend. Yes. It's not just calling them when we need them, when we want something, when we need God to move. But sometimes I just call to say hello, friend. <laughs> I just call to say I love you, friend. I just call to spend some time with you, friend. Communication is key. Clear communication is important in any relationship as it allows you to effectively share feelings, opinions, expectations, check your perception of what's going on in that relationship. Yet many people, many of us right here in this Zoom room fail to communicate due to fear of rejection, huh? fear that will end up upsetting the other party, alienating them, losing a good friend being on the outs with family members. So what do we do? We, we don't really communicate properly. I'll give you a, for instance, at my job, many of you know or may not know that I deal in IT. I deal with training and helping people use software. So they'll call me when they don't understand how this is operating, when they're getting errors or when they need a quick training of how to. But you know what I get a lot? I get many people who call me and say, guess what? My boss sent me an email. Can you tell me what this email is asking me to do? <laughs> That's not computer related. That's not technology related. That's comprehension related. Why aren't you calling your boss, the one who sent you that email, the one who sent you that request? Why aren't you going back to the horse's mouth to get the information you need to do your job? Why are you relying on my opinion of how I believe it should go, what I believe you should do? I might get it wrong. Why not go back to the source? Communication is key. But oftentimes they're afraid. They don't want to bother their boss. They don't want to upset their boss. They don't want to look foolish before their boss. So they ask me, somebody who does not work in your department, somebody who knows all about computers, but I don't know what your boss is asking you. I can make it up. I could figure it out, but I can't tell you with any certainty. You need to ask them. And so, beloved, today, with God being your good friend, I have to ask, what do you do when you are uncertain about a situation? What is your go-to decision-making strategy? Are you always phoning a friend? Are you always getting consensus from the masses? Do you run and hide when you have a big decision to make and just want to go to sleep and, and just ignore it, put your head in the sand like the ostrich, hoping it'll go away, but it only gets bigger? 
Or do you reason it out with your finite understanding of what you've experienced in life so far, what you've encountered in life so far, and try to figure out and reason out what your next step should be? Or do you do what David did and what we need to learn to do every hour (laughs) when we need God? Ask God. He's the author and finisher of your faith, of your life, of your being. Why are we afraid to go to the source? Why do we hesitate going to the source and asking God what we should do? See, far too often we labor in the unproductive behavior of agonizing over the issue or complaining about the issue or talking at God about the issue. We wonder and we fail to engage with God in healthy, clear, concise, consistent communication. Beloved, communication is key. That said, I have three keys to good communication as outlined in the scripture. First Samuel 23 verses one to five is read in your hearing. Number one, when in doubt, ask God first. When in doubt, when confused, when you have a question, when you don't know what to do, ask God first. Too often we leave prayer, that conversation with God, that communication with God as a last resort when it should be our plan A. I've often heard it said, I've even fall into the dilemma of saying it myself. Oh, yes, there's nothing left to do but pray. In other words, I've exhausted my human options. I've exhausted phoning my friends. I've exhausted Google. I've exhausted asking this one and that one and still have the problem. Guess what? (laughs) There's nothing left to do but talk to my friend who knows all and can do all. Why do we treat prayer, communication with God as the booby prize? The what have you got to lose anyway strategy might as well pray when in reality, God should be our go to option in all things. Don't you know that God loves the sound of your voice? We have this great privilege and yet too often we fail to use it when dodging the obstacles life throws at us. We feel always like we're juggling all these balls. We don't know which one to catch first, which one to put on the sidelines. And we feel stressed out and confused when really we just needed to ask God, what do I do next? And know that God will answer. In this text, the first verse, the Bible says, now they told David, The Philistines are fighting against Kayla and are raiding the threshing floor. In other words, David at this present time is hiding for his life. He's holed up in a cave somewhere, running from King Saul, who has vowed to take his life. He was safe at the very present moment because King Saul didn't know where he was because he was in a cave. But the people... (laughs) The people called to David, telling him all that was going wrong in Kayla, looking up to him and looking for him to rescue them. You know, the Philistines, that old familiar foe, at present, they were robbing the the threshing floors. In other words, they were waiting until Kayla's citizens had harvested and threshed their grain. And then they just stole it from them stole their livelihoods, stole their provision, their means of feeding their family. Have you ever been in a situation where it felt like the world was just taking from you? You lost your job, what am I to do? But you didn't run and ask God first. You ran and asked everybody else and started thinking up your own schemes of how you were gonna get out of this mess. How many have had people come late at night or in the middle of the day knocking on your door, bleeding their hearts out with their problem, and you felt you needed to take their problem and make it your problem? Yes, we are our brothers and sisters keeper, but if you ever take a moment and ask God how I should respond, how I should help, if I should help in this situation... See, there was a grave injustice underway. People were being robbed of their livelihoods by an enemy. 
And they ran to David because they trusted David. They knew he was a man of God and they knew he was a man of war. And David, whose heart was broken with the things that break God's heart, was not comfortable watching others mistreated, was not comfortable standing still and doing nothing when others were being tormented. His conscience just would not allow him to know about these injustices and look the other way and remain quiet. But again, my brothers and my sisters, it's not always wise to rush in to rescue others. It's not always even God's will for us to do that. Knowing something should be done and knowing what that particular something is in this particular situation for you particularly to do is something altogether different. There are many ways this could have been handled, but David wanted to handle it the right way. David wanted to handle it the sure way. And if we know anything of of what we say we believe, the only right way is God's way. It's not our way. It's not what we think, what we feel, or what somebody has spoken to us. It's what has God said to you specifically about this issue. And understanding that the first thing David did was go to God and ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do about this situation? And God told him what he wanted him to do. I want you to take action. I want you to go in there and I want you to rescue the citizens of Caleb from the Philistines. And so David was like, bet, I'll do what you said. Ask me to do. I'm going to go. Because communication is key. But how many of us do that? How many of us watch things on the news and maybe we decide what we'll do? or maybe we'll sit and do nothing. How many of us has a, have a problem lurking at our door, a letter we received in the mail, a doctor's report that we received, and we don't actually ask God, what would you have me to do in this situation? Don't you know that God is willing to answer your every prayer? As I was praying in our prayer time, One of the things sometimes that I struggle with is that I play the video with music. And since it's with music, I can't talk over the music. My husband will always tell me that we can't hear what you're saying. We can't hear what you're saying. So you'll notice today I didn't first pray over the music because I didn't want it to interfere. And so as I was praying, one of the things I said is, God, how can I do that? And just that quick, God said, why don't you? Not share sound through the computer for prayer, but let the music play through your mic. Then you could talk and walk basically at the same time, probably without issue. I had never asked God before. I had tried to figure it out on my own. I've played with the settings, trying to get these things correct. I've tried to uh, uh, lower the volume and still my husband is like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And just like that. Too often we forget that God is a present help for everything. God is just saying, why don't you ask me? (laughs) I'll tell you. But God is not going to bust up in your life and be a know-it-all and give you every answer you need. You need to prove that you trust him by what? Asking him. Communication is key. Saying, just have a little talk with me. Number two, don't ponder at the pool of popularity. (laughs) Visions and things God has given you are confirmed by his word. They will not be confirmed by public opinion. They may be, but you can't take public opinion as a guarantee that what you think God said he said. In other words, you don't ask other people first. You have to ask God first. The text goes on in verse three to say, but David's men, after David told them what God said, David's men said to him, look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Kayla against the armies of Philistine? So they're pouring and crying and whining. And don't you know that's making David reconsider what God said? How many times have you shared what God has said with somebody else? Don't you know nobody else is ready to receive what God said to you? First of all, usually what God said to you is going to look a little crazy. It's going to sound crazy. It's going to be like, huh, is that God? 
And so when you report it to other people who are only speaking, thinking with their mind, they're going to probably tell you the pros and cons and remind you of how crazy this thing is. And maybe I didn't even hear God. And usually you begin to default on moving on what God told you to do because it doesn't make sense. If it made sense, we didn't need to hear it from God. We could have probably thought about it on ourselves, but God is always gonna give you something miraculous, something different, something that's not even the direction you were looking at to let you know that I'm the one that did this thing when it comes to pass. When I asked God, what is my purpose in life? I was seeking God for my purpose. And God told me to preach. Don't you know the girl who came from a family of unbelievers who didn't grow up in the church knew that sounded crazy? If I would have went and told my family, I believe I'm called to preach, there would have not have been a one that would have been able to confirm it. In fact, they would list every reason why this was not even possible or credible, and I had lost my mind. Mm. I sat on that vision for two years mm. before going to my pastor because it just seemed too big. Beloved, don't ponder at the pool of popularity. You don't need anyone else to co-sign what God told you but God. Trust God. See, after sharing his God-given revelation, David's men were like, look, <laughs> we're still homeless. We living up in a cave. No bed, no home, no four walls to call our own. We're hiding here because the king with the real big army wants to kill us. And you want us to do what now? It makes no sense. But your purpose that God gives you most likely will must sound a little crazy, as I've said. You need to receive your direction from God, not from the pool of popularity. It's okay to ask some people. It's okay to get some godly counsel. But it's not okay to reshape what God told you to do based on their response to you. Mm -hmm. These women were like, let me get this straight. You want us to come out of hiding so the king will know where we are and, and, and come after us? And you want us to do this not so that we can eat, but so that we can take up somebody else's cause so we can fight somebody else's battle? No. <laughs> we got our own problems. Again. Don't ponder at the pool of popularity. Don't go back and say, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I wonder if this is what God said or meant. All you need to do is open your mouth and ask God. What do you do when you've asked God, you've heard God, but after sharing it with somebody else who didn't catch the vision, after wondering about it, by your own finite thinking that you begin to get confused. You begin to edit the memo. <laughs> you begin to make modifications on what God told you. That's what Sarah did. They knew what God had said, that you will bring forth a child of promise. You too, Abraham and Sarah, I'm gonna work this miracle in your life. But after waiting, the vision got cloudy. And Sarah said, I know what. I know what God must have meant. <laughs> God must have meant and then put words in God's mouth. And Abraham said, you know what? I wonder. I think maybe you're right. It's okay to get godly counsel, but the minute godly counsel alters the vision God gave you, the minute godly counsel edits the memo that God gave you, then you need to remember communication is key and go back to the source to hear clearly what your next step is. Point three, before I get to point three, so Sister Manny, <laughs> since you shared, 
what I would say to you is absolutely. When we ask God, should I get this surgery? And we begin to get testimonies of other people. That's a yes. But if you never even ask God yet, you need to ask God. Because that's how we got the Ishmael in life. That's how we got that trial son that is the father of Islam right now that we're warring against our own uh, 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 half brother because they didn't check in and say, God, is maybe, could this be? Because I can't say yes or no if those testimonies were confirmation. They sound like it. But if you never ask God yourself, God, what should I do? Should I get it? Then you need to first check in with God and then let the confirmations speak for themselves. It very well could be. We all might even cheer you on and say, absolutely. But I caution now, if you never ask God, first ask him and then see. And that's how we all do do things. We get a few things that seem that they line up and we're like, I think God is telling me. Don't you know the enemy will play with you and mess you up to get you off course by showing having things line up that look like they're correct? But if you don't check in with God, you don't have your 100% guarantee confirmation that is correct. So let's just always check in. Why? Because communication is key. Point number three. There's nothing wrong with asking twice. If you notice, every time the disciples were with Jesus, a lot of times Jesus said something. What did the disciples do? They got in their little cluster going, what do you think he meant? I hate to say it, God, but it's like dumb asking dumber, right? Like we ask, we all don't know. And we're going to ask each other what you think this is when God is right there in the room with you. Why not just ask your friend? Why not just ask the savior? Why not just ask the master? What are we afraid of? God is not offended by our questions. He's hurt when we don't ask him. Mm. Because what we're really saying is, I think I know better than you. Yes. And how could the created thing know better than the creator what they need to do next? <laughs> oh, my God. And in living life, we just become accustomed to doing things the way the world does, looking something up, getting an expert, doing all this. But we do it without first checking in with God. And God is always standing there like a gentleman, wet, ready and waiting and willing to answer the question if we would simply go to him first and ask. The text in verse five goes on to say, then David inquired of the Lord again. Why? Because he spoke to the others and they confused him because they kept giving their long list of cons about why this was a bad idea. But David was determined to do the will of God. So now in that confused state that sometimes we can get into, because instead of just doing it, instead of writing it down so that we could run to it, we just decided to read. So we don't sometimes really understand or we want, don't know what the original proclamation was and God again doesn't have a problem with going back and asking him see David is not double checking with the people are you sure you really think that is a bad idea he's not double checking with them they can't give him it hot off the press from the creator he's going back to the master to double check asking David inquired of the Lord again double checking with God and the thing is this, he's not asking God, are you sure, God? Because that would be a foolish question, right? If God <laughs> told it to you, he's sure. He knows everything. But it's saying to God, I want to be clear that what I heard is what you said so that I can now move in that. See, there's nothing wrong with getting a second opinion or godly counsel. Again, I say, unless it alters dramatically or voids the vision. If the person you went to is voiding it and it's something that was in the word of God, which is the will of God and something you believe you heard and they're not uh, changing it because it's contrary to his word, but they're, they're changing it based on their opinion. There's nothing wrong with going back so that God can give you the message again, because you're saying, I want to be obedient, Lord, but I want to just confirm what I heard. When in doubt, ask God again, did you really say? The reality is we'd all be in a much better position if Adam and Eve understood the theory that communication is key. 
Because then when the serpent started slithering up to them saying, did God really say? And making them all confused and making them believe God was withholding something. They walked with God. They talked with God face to face. How easy would it have been to say, wait a minute right there, serpent. I hear you. It sounds intriguing. But let me go back and check. Let me ask God again. What was it you said? Did you say we really can't eat it because we would die? What does die mean? God, what did you really say? Are you trying to withhold? Or is this something you're doing to keep me safe? If they would have only gone back to the source and checked their understanding with God, whoop, maybe we all could still be living in paradise, even now. But instead, they heard a whisper of one other person, one other thing, and then re-edited the memo from God without bothering to go back and ask God, God, did you say and did you really mean? they would have just checked in how different things would have been when in doubt ask God again can you repeat the instructions because now I I'm just a little confused and I don't want to misstep it's not that I don't trust you it's not that I don't believe you but I don't want to get it wrong I want to get to it quicker. You know how they say uh, uh, the fastest route is between the, the fastest route is between a, is a straight line point A and B. The reason we don't get some of the things as soon as we want to get them is not always God's delay. Sometimes it's because we just meandered around the pool of popularity, popular opinion, what everyone else is saying, what everyone else is thinking, and what we think we know. And so instead of just doing what God asked us to do and checking to make sure that's what he asked us and moving in that thing, we spinning around all other places. The fastest way to get from your point A to your point B, from your promise to receiving your promise, from your uh, asking God the way for his giving you the roadmap is just to ask God. Communication, beloved, is key. Why spend nights worrying and wondering what to do? Worrying and wondering what will happen when all you have to do is just ask God. We do it with our GPS systems, right? We have these GPS systems. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they don't get it right. I have my husband's one and I just don't trust his because it seems like it's always rerouting or like doing something strange. So what do we do? We double check it. I turn mine on. Let's compare notes before we start out. Okay, this, you know, this is thinking. Let's go. And then we just follow that. How would we do if we would just go back to God and ask him for his directions. If we, when we think we don't understand, we think it got a little fuzzy. We think we disconnected to the power source, which is God. We think we're not hearing as clearly and we have too many other voices in our ear. Why don't we double check just like this? Go back to God and ask God again. James first one, uh, chapter one, verse five states, if any of you is lacking wisdom <laughs> and beloved, let, let's not fool ourselves. Not, let's not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Let, let's not think we all that smart, no matter what degrees we have. We all have a level of education. However, when it comes to some things going on in life, we don't have a clue. And God says, if any of you is lacking wisdom of what to do at a particular moment and what this, what strategy to take at a particular thing, what decision to make about a particular thing, he says, ask God no. who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. In other words, he's not going to be mad at you because the last time he asked you to do something, you didn't do it and refuse to answer and tell you what to do now. He's always going to give you wisdom for the moment when you ask. He's always going to, he might not give you the end of your story, but he'll give you enough light for the next step. But we fail to ask. God said we could ask him for wisdom. Ask him which fork in the road leads to our breakthrough. There's several options that are coming up, but which one is the way? 
I'm pretty sure I shared this before, but when I, years ago, when, you know, job hunting, I've been at my present job a while, I would always go out and interview and then ask God, I said, God, if I get the job and it's not the job you want me to have, don't let, no, you know, if I interview and it's not the job you want me to have, don't even let me get the offer, God. Because I don't have sense enough to, uh, you know, if they pay more money, maybe not to go that way. I want the decision to be easy, God. Let only the one I'm supposed to be at come back with the offer, God. Mm -hmm. So I know which way I should be going, God. I would always ask God. Now, not in everything. Nobody's perfect. But some things. And in all things, though, we should. See, it's not always asking God to put something in our hand. It's not always asking God to get us out of this mess. But often it's asking God, which way do I go? Which thing do I do now? And when it's unclear, there's no harm in asking God again, just to ensure your own personal clarity. Again, God is not offended at our questions, but he's hurt by the absence of them. Who better to know to go to in any issue that is giving you some pause and giving you some, you don't know which way to go. Who better to go to than the all knowing God who by the way says, I'm your friend. I got you. Who better to rely on the one that sees all? Who better to go to to say, Lord, is this the road or is it that one? <laughs> Is this the way I should do it? Or is it another way? Is this the day it will come to pass? Or is it for another day? But you first have to ask for the wisdom. Ask God, being mindful again that communication is key. And as I get ready to close, the book of James goes on to say, but ask in faith, never doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Always believe that God, number one, will answer. And when God answers, he's not answering with a setup. He's not answering to trap you off. He's not answering so he could have a punchline at the end of your story. He's not answering so he could get kicks and giggles and be like, <laughs> they listened to me. They really did it. I can't believe it. He's always going to answer and tell you exactly what you need. A personal response just for you, not a generic response. But what you should do next, how you should handle it next, where you should go next, what you should say next, the timing of it all. My brothers and my sisters, we need to learn to stop pleading with God, stop begging God, stop making deals with God and learn how to simply, a novel idea, just ask God. God has promised to answer. David, the man after God's own heart, said in Psalms 27, 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, to be able to be in the presence of the one who created me, who knows everything about me, who knows what he has just for me, who knows everything on the road up ahead, who knows the people that are plotting behind my back, who knows everything. How wonderful. Really, the one thing that you need, sometimes you say, oh, if I just had a new house, oh, if I just, no, the one thing you need is to have a relationship with the God who knows everything about you and desires only good for you and have the privilege to ask him, what's my next step? What's the next thing? How do I get out of this? What's the purpose that you created me for? God, they're knocking at my door. Should I, should I answer it and make their emergency my emergency or should I release it? into your hand. How much more peace would we have if we just remembered? Communication is key. You could ask God everything and anything. And again, as I close, the, the, the beautiful thing about this text also is in verse five, after asking God again, after God confirming again, yes, I want you to fight for them. I want you to deliver them. I want you to go, even though it sounds crazy, because I got you and I'll deliver them into your hand. And it says, so David and his men went to Gala, fought with the Philistines, brought away their livestock and dealt them a heavy defeat. Thus, David rescued the inhabitants of Gala, 
what you need to see in this text here is God told him, yes, go and fight the Philistines. Because guess what? When you do that, you will be victorious. And when you do that, the citizens of Kayla will be saved and rescued and the food that they have grown and that they have threshed for themselves will be restored to them. But God never mentioned anything about livestock. That was a bonus for their obedience. See, God says, anything you do for me, I'll make it worth your while. He won't tell you everything ahead of time. He's not trying to bribe you to do his will. He said, if you do my will, not only will I make it good, not only will I do what I said I would do, but I'll give you over and above what I promised. See, the livestock belonged to the Philistines, but as they beat them down and beat them back, as they did a good deed for the citizens of Caleb, God said, their livestock is yours. That's wealth, people. <laughs> That's money, people. That's my next meal on the table, people. That's provision. I didn't know what I was going to get when I went and was out to be obedient to God, but as I walked by faith and not by sight, as I didn't lean to my own understanding, as I did what God asked me to do, even though it was scary, even though I was afraid, God said, beloved, I'll always make it worth your while. I'll always give you a blessing over and above that, which I made known unto you. My brothers and my sisters, God will always do just what he said. But when dealing with issues that may seem gray, when you are not sure, and how could you be? It's always okay to check back in with the master. Be sure to ask him in every fork in your road, every crossroad, which way should I go? They, they both have appealed to me, God, but which way is the way you would have me to go? Communication is key. We don't have to spin around in confusion. We don't have to wade through the darkness, finding our way. All we have to do is ask God. And when we're still a little sure, unsure, we ask God again, not doubting that he spoke to us, but just trying to be clear so that we don't misstep. God will tell you when to stop pining over people that your heart has been pining. He'll tell you when the relationship is dead and he'll tell you, and you need to let them go and give them the gift of goodbye or when you need to stay in the struggle by faith. You don't have to wonder about those things. Is this one for me? Is that one not for me? Ask God. He's waiting and willing to tell you. You don't have to stay up nights wondering if the people at your job are plotting behind your back. You could ask God <laughs> and he'll tell you and give you the next step for you to do. You don't have to get your hands dirtied in the messiness of life. You can ask God and just do the next thing God has asked you to do. God will always show you the place to go and how to get there. It generally will not make sense at first, but don't process it through your own mind. Process it through your faith. Don't process it through the opinion of others. Process it through your faith. Trust what God says anyway. And when confused, beloved, check back in and ask God, can, can, can you please tell me just one more and again, I, I just want to make sure I get this thing right. And God always will answer. Don't be afraid. God is not too busy for you. He's your friend. God is not too busy for you. Remember, beloved, as I close for real this time, communication is key. You have to have that talk with God. Not just talk at him, not just tell him all your troubles, but ask God, what should I do? How should I maneuver? What should I say? And God will always give you the next step, the next thing. And whatever God tells you to do, beloved, do it. Because it's always going to work out right. It's always going to work out for your good. God is always going to make it worth your while. Amen. Amen. Amen.